I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story first. So, this is my story. So, imagine a typical three-year-old, a typical three-year-old girl, for instance, likes to wear everything fancy dress. Her name is Jessica. She likes putting stuff in her hair. She likes singing. She likes dancing. Um, but you'll always notice, she always stuffed things down her trousers. Mum and Dad had no idea why. So, as Jess grew up, she hated dresses. If anyone brought makeup near her, she'd scream, she'd run away, like I probably would now if someone came near me with makeup. Um, but as she got a little bit older and started high school, she noticed something wasn't right. So, she went by her days, like school, how you would. She got bullied a little bit for being a little bit different, and she started to realise that maybe she was different because actually she didn't like boys like she was supposed to. She, sh she thought she liked girls. So came out as a lesbian. So she got bullied for it, like I said before. But her friends were amazing and her parents were great as well. They didn't really care. They were really happy for her. She got her first girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Honestly. Right. <laughs> But for some reason, she still didn't feel right. <clears throat> so, when she was 14, she topped all her hair off. And even though it looked a bit silly, and she corrected it eventually, um, it made her feel better. It really did. Her hair was all people were talking about. She was talk of the school. So, around this time as well, she started talking to people online that were LGBT. So, on forums and things like that. She found out lots of new things. Some people were bi, some people were non-binary, and a lovely girl called Leah explained what transgender meant to. So, <clears throat> prom came. She wore a dress at her mother's wishes, but she didn't want to wear the dress. So, instead of wearing high heels, she wore trainers underneath because that's, that's what these people do. I don't know what she's doing. Um, she, ke she went to college, and college was great. She started getting to wear her own clothes. She actually found, finally found found herself and that's where her obsession with bow ties started <clears throat> but the thing in the back of her head was still growing and at this point it was getting to a breaking level so she tried being feminine extra feminine would you say that didn't work she tried even being more masculine even picking up rugby to see if that would help it didn't i'm just gonna tell you that um <laughs> And she actually fell into a depression, and it was the first time her mental health had ever been as bad as it was. <clears throat> so she started uni, and everything was going well. She was finally away from home and starting to enjoy herself. And then one night under the stars at 12 a.m., she was sat with her friends outside. And I don't know if you guys know what a DMC is, a deep, meaningful conversation. Um, <laughs> so we were sat having one of them, um, and she finally just said, I'm not Jessica. <clears throat> I've never felt like Jessica. I'm not a girl. I'm a man. William was born. So, hi. <laughs> I'm William, and that was my story. Uh, I'm 21, and I'm a third-year medical student. I'm a Holly, and uh, my goals are to be a transgender health consultant. I'd love to be a trans patient advocate in hospitals as well, and I would absolutely love to do a TED Talk. Honestly, I watch so many of them. So, <laughs> oh, that's kind of a helpful bit to understand. Uh, I'm a transgender man. <laughs> so, you've probably got some questions. So, um, this is a cute little comparison of me. And some questions that you're probably thinking already, what I get all the time, is, when did you know? I've probably known my entire life. As I said, I used to stuff stuff down my trousers as a child. Um, still do now. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I have started my transition. I was lucky enough that my parents had already saved some money for me, so we ended up getting private hormone treatment. No, I haven't had any surgeries yet. I wear a binder every day underneath my shirt. It holds my chest down. Um, and I'll tell you the reason why I've not had any surgeries. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about transgender healthcare within the UK. So... This might seem like a lot, but I thought it was definitely necessary for you to see. So there is eight clinics in, the, in England 
There's two clinics in Scotland, one in Wales and one in Northern Ireland. There's only one private care facility in the UK, and that is in Mayfair in London. And there is a online service, which is the one I use that works with your GP. So let's say, OK, so there's 13 physical services that you can go to within the UK. And I found out there is 1,257 hospitals within the UK and only 13 of them offer help for a population that's now times by 200% than it was five years ago. So just imagine how many people need treatment. Okay, me being included. <clears throat> so wait times. I would like to shove, uh, shove this out to you. That's not, not, that's not what I meant. I'd like to ask you guys to give me an estimate at how long you think the waiting list is. The longest waiting list for one of the clinics. Anyone just shout out. Years, that's great, yeah. Okay, so it's not five years, but the longest is 40 months. So the average waiting time for any other service in the UK is actually an 18-week referral. So the shortest being a 20-month waiting time is a hell of a long time. So I thought, rather than telling you about all the weird and wonderful surgeries and hormone treatment, I'd tell you a bit about what everyone in healthcare should know. <clears throat> So a bit about pronouns. So a trans man like myself will use he, him. A trans lady probably would use she, her. And a non-binary person could use they, them. Now, not everyone is going to use these. They might use different ones. It depends on how they identify, because there's lots of agendas, just the ones I've got up on the board. Um, but these are, most of the time, what they are going to be. So other things include things like zizim and using MX rather than Mr. or Mrs. Um, and as I say, some people use a mix. And if you don't know what someone identifies as, ask. <clears throat> what can I do? So if you work in the hospital, you probably don't know this, but recently the NHS has changed how they run. And if a transgender person comes into a normal general ward, you can now ask them what ward they would prefer to be on, if they'd like to be on the men's or the women's. And that's the same with non-binary people as well. They can be asked. Um, if the person's incapacitated or unconscious, you can now decide on their best behalf. And this is by looking at their name, what pronouns they use and how they present. So if I walked in physically presenting as a male using he and him, there is no way, shape or form you could physically put me in the female ward because I'd kick and scream once I did wake back up. Um, <laughs> you can't determine it. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> you can't determine it in any other way either. If you work in general practice, so I say have a read. So if you're a GP or you're wanting to work in GP, you should know where the local services are, which one is closest to you. And every website actually tells you, um, actually tells you <laughs> um, how to refer. And also the Royal College of GPs are actually creating their own e-modules now as well that will be sent out in the next year. Oh, and also, um, I thought, don't forget screening. Most transgender people don't actually get invited to screening uh, due to changes in their uh, gender markers. So someone like me that still does have breasts, say if I still had them when I'd need breast screening, wouldn't be invited because I am classed as a male. Um, so I've also provided a couple of links to show what I have been doing. Um, and if anyone's got any questions at the end, I'm, I will answer them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.